could cost you money, especially when it's crooked. Fours of a kind are powerful hands in poker, but they always lose to a royal flush. And the royal flush in this case is held by John Scarney, America's leading exposer of dishonest gambling. Like an athlete, Scarney keeps in training, but all his skill lies in his fingers and finesse. He's mastered every card trick to show you how to be careful, to beware of card manipulators who invite you to a gentleman's game of chance. game played here with corks and cuffs has fooled more people than you can count. It's the classic come on to the sure thing. You think you know where the corks are, but you'll be sorry if you bet, for the hand is quicker than the eye. The manipulation takes a fraction of a second, and the greed of the sucker makes him blinder than ever. Getting back to cards, when is a shuffle not a shuffle? Certainly not when all 13 spades remain on the top of the deck. Yep, that's the way they roll off. Now you can watch in slow motion. Once more, the 13 spades are on the top of the deck, just where he wants them to be when he's through shuffling. the cards merge, it looks on the level. But notice what happens now. The cards are pulled through and come out on the other side exactly as they went in. This is called the pull through. It can easily be mastered and it looks exactly like the real thing, as though there really was an honest shuffle. Of course, we know it wasn't honest at all, thanks to the camera. Plus the fact that 13 spades that went in at the top just shouldn't come out the same way. Here again you see that pull-through shuffle. It looks honest, but it should warn you not to play with total strangers. Another trick of the card shark. He takes the four eights puts them on top of the deck and cuts the cards. When he deals, there are the four eights which should have been in the middle of the pack. To show you how smooth he is, Scarney does it again, this time with the eights face up. Let's watch this in slow motion. The four eights go on top of the deck. that as he draws out the bottom half of the deck, his fingers spread to put the top supposedly on the bottom. But wait a minute. This means that there was never really a change at all. The cut took place all right, but the cards were switched right back to where they started. Gamblers call this illegal sleight of hand cut switching. It is an extra fine method of cheating used when a card sharp is not working with an accomplice and has to rely on his own ingenuity. Another thing to guard against is the lone crook who deals from the bottom. First, he stacks the deck to put the cards he wants on the bottom. Then he deals out the hands, dealing only to himself from the bottom and giving himself the four big aces, of course. Looking up through a glass top table, we can see how it's done. Notice again that he uses just half of the deck. According to Scarney, this is a tip-off to this cheating maneuver. This is not to say that highly trained card sharps can't deal from the bottom with an entire deck. It's just that a half pack makes it easier. When the deck is thin, it's almost impossible to detect bottom dealing. crook has four hidden aces, you're in trouble. Now, 
with all the cards spread out, here is an example of cheating that requires the ultimate in card manipulation. John places four aces at random into the open deck. Then, by using every trick that you've seen and even some more that you haven't, he'll bring those aces out where he wants them. By pull-through shuffling, switch cutting, and second card and bottom card dealing, they all fall into place. Did you want the ace of clubs? How about the ace of diamonds? The ace of hearts. And the ace of spades. Did you get all those straight? Well, as usual, you were wrong. There's a fancy word for this. It's called prestidigitation. Once again, using the same simple fundamentals of card manipulation you've already seen, Scarney shows how smooth a trained card sharp can be. Watch as carefully as you can. But no matter how carefully you look, don't bet on what you thought you saw. Now, let's assume that Scarney is dealing stud or blackjack and has a queen up and a deuce in the hole. Did we say a deuce? close-up allows you to observe what is much too quick for the unaided eye. The queen is being flipped into the palm. Scarney has the other whole card under his palm and it takes just a fraction of a second to exchange them. A deuce is not a deuce, nor is a queen a queen, as long as Scarney can get his hand over the whole card for the allotted moment of time. Since it's common practice to put your hand over the whole card, the whole card switch can be used at will by the clever cheater. The moral of this cannot be emphasized enough. Never gamble at cards unless you know at least one of the players and can be sure that the game is honest. With long and constant practice, anyone can master these tricks. You must remember that some people use them to cheat. Let's go back to where we started, with a crooked dealer in the game of poker. Late in the game, the card sharp deals, and everyone gets a tremendous fighting hand. But he deals himself an overwhelming royal flush, and his victims might just as well throw their money away. Don't let yourself get into a gentleman's game of chance you might not run into an honest card sharp like John Scarnett.